Another victim has came forward, and this ties into Cassie's story that she told when she filed her lawsuit last November. Let's go ahead and get into it, you guys. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Talk the Real Deal with AT2. And yes, I'm your boy AT2. How everybody doing? How everybody living? How everybody feeling? I apologize because I didn't realize I said this at 2:45. I thought I said it at three o'clock. So my apologies up front. You know I love y'all. Don't charge it to don't charge it to my heart, right? Um, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Y'all already know what it is. Uh, what's up, everybody in the building? How everybody doing? All right, so let's go ahead and hop right on into it. So Cassie's friend, Brianna, she is the one suing. I pointed the arrow to her. She's the one with the blue hair. She is suing Diddy. Now, remember Cassie had told a story about her friend who was dangled over the balcony? Well, Brianna is now sharing her story. Shout out to Tiffany Red. Tiffany Red is the one on the right side right there with the red hair. She was the one who kind of blew this up and was all like, yeah, you guys keep thinking that it was a man who was dangled over the balcony? Because remember, the story was it was Wale. No, she was all like, it was a woman. But she didn't say who it was at the time. So I want to go ahead and play Tiffany's Red video, and then we're going to go ahead and get into a little bit of the lawsuit that Brianna filed yesterday. I'm really proud of my sis. I'm proud. You know, when you get into the music industry or entertainment or, you know, any of this kind of stuff, fashion, like you don't get into the game thinking that this is what your experience is going to be like. Like all of us um, that were creating around that time, we're all just one. We were all we all are so fucking talented. We had massive dreams and we're creating some incredible shit. And it is just so unfortunate that these are the things that were going on that um, hindered so much of the beautiful, incredible fire shit that we were creating for the world. And that we created, you know, within our crew, you know, so it's crazy to see how it all is shaken out. But yeah <laughs> so the person that was hung off of cassie's balcony um in 2016 after the hotel incident um is a woman it's a woman Now, in the lawsuit, it does not state that Tiffany was there during this, but obviously you see that Tiffany was friends with Cassie and Brianna, who is who did file the lawsuit. Now, I just wanted to go ahead and read you what USA Today said. Uh, they said, a fashion designer is suing, she's also a photographer as well, too. A fashion designer is suing Sean Diddy Combs and alleging abuse, including claims saying that Combs threatened to kill her and dangled her from a 17... A 17th floor balcony, according to reports uh, from Deadline and Rolling Stone. According to outlets, Brianna Banna Bongalong filed a lawsuit against Combs in Los Angeles this week, seeking 10 million, 10 million in damages from the embattled music mogul. Combs is currently being held in Brooklyn Detention Center ahead of his May 2, 2025 trial for a federal sex crimes case following his September arrest. The suit claims Combs dangled Bongalon uh, off a 17-story balcony at his ex-girlfriend Cassandra Cassie Ventura Fines Los Angeles apartment building in September 2016. 
The only purpose of dangling someone over a balcony is to actually kill them or to intentionally terrorize them and rob them of any concept of dominion over their own bodily autonomy and safety. Bangalore's lawyer, James R. Nickarafter. Um, and so these are different lawyers. These aren't the Tony Busby's and stuff like this. Uh, James R. Nickarafter and Miller Bar Barandis. Those are her lawyers. Um, after dangling her, the lawsuit claims he slammed her into the patio furniture on the balcony. Bongalong suit joins, uh, joins over a dozen civil lawsuits aimed at Combs over the past year. According to the reports, the suit also claims Combs said he could kill her and referred to himself as the devil. Mmm. Crazy. Um... Bangalore allegations mirror similar claims made by Ventura Fine in a lawsuit against Combs last November and settled a day later for an undisclosed amount. Sean Diddy Combs' legal team denies claim in statement. In a statement shared to USA Today on Saturday, Combs' team pushed back on Bangalore's claims. As we have shared previously, anyone has the right to file a lawsuit regardless of evidence they may or may not have. Combs' legal team, since last year, Ms. Bangalore has expressed an intention to sue Mr. Combs and has sought legal representation to pursue her claims. Uh, Combs' team continued, Mr. Combs firmly denies these serious allegations and remains confident they will ultimately be proven baseless. He has unwavering faith in the facts and in the fairness of the judicial process. In court, the truth will come to light, demonstrating that the claims against Mr. Combs are without merit. Of course, he had to give his statement and what he believes and all that other stuff. Y'all know how it is. Um, but also, some more context. So, Bongalong and her girlfriend were sleeping at Cassie's place, right? Cassie and Diddy had came back, and this was after a freak-off. And so he was angry, he was upset, and Bongalong went ahead and hid her girlfriend in the bathroom while she ran to the patio. So she ran to the patio, Diddy seen her, and then that's when the altercation had happened. Now, I, if I remember correctly, in Cassie's lawsuit, she said that this was the friend who also tried to help her when it came to trying to get out that situation with Diddy, and maybe that's why he was angry or upset. Um, but either way, if Cassie is her witness and can verify the story, also whoever the girlfriend is can also verify this story, it's not going to look good for Diddy. And of course he's going to deny it. Didn't he deny doing anything to Cassie? And remember, he, y'all, y'all seen the video of Cassie trying to escape. He drugged her like she was nothing. I mean, we see proof is in the pudding. Like, it's not a lie. Why would we ever think that what is being shared or what is being said is a, a lie? Like, when we've seen it, we know he's aggressive. Now that I kind of can take a look back at everything that has happened, Diddy is a drug addict. And I don't want to say was. I want to use the present tense. He is a drug addict. A lot of the stuff that he was doing, even still till today, um, he just happens to be in jail. That's why he's sober. But he was still on that pink stuff when he got arrested. So knowing that, he is an addict. And he's going to act like an addict acts. And he's very aggressive. None of that smooth, calm me down, you know, I just want to relax, have a good time. No, it, it makes him very aggressive. Very aggressive. And some people might be all like, well, he probably just has that aggr aggressive nature in him. Partially, I could see that. But I also think it's the drugs as well, too. I believe the drugs are making him even more um, evil than he already is. I don't think necessarily it, it's enhancing what he's doing. It, it can be innately in him. But I believe that the drugs aren't helping him as well, too. You know, but he's definitely on some shit. And it's proven to be he is. 
And when you get in that kind of culture, he was he was really moving like a kingpin. Like, bitch, you got my money? Like, he was moving like a kingpin. I don't know what other way to put it. He was moving like, you know, he was the, I mean, well, hell, he was the kingpin, right? An aggressive addict. Yes, definitely. He was moving like a kingpin, threatening people, beating people up, blowing up cars. You know, Kid Cudi confirmed that. And hello, everybody coming in the room. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you. Thank you. Cassie confirmed that. So, um, well, Kid Cudi confirmed that, yeah, Diddy did blow up my car. And so all these things are happening around, you know, the industry, and Diddy is the cause of it. However, nobody was brave enough to call him out until Cassie did it. And I have to say, thank you, Cassie, because you probably have saved a lot of people. Granted, some situations happen, and I know there's nuances to things, but her coming forward and sharing her story, it gave br bravery for everybody else to come forward and tell their story. Because granted, say if Cassie would have not said anything, or Diddy would have paid her her money like she asked him to, I don't think nothing would have ever happened. And Diddy is so shady and so cheap. And, and granted, granted, I'm not saying that, oh, pay people off and then everything will go away and you'll be fine. No, if you did crimes, you deserve to be in jail, right? You deserve to go to jail. Diddy dirty money, exactly. If you did crimes, you deserve to go to jail. However, what I'm saying is, because we know Diddy doesn't pay his artists, he doesn't pay the people around him, he's very cheap. This is the reason why Cassie had to come forward. You offered her a 10 album deal. She only had one album that came out. Nothing else happened after that one album. I think Cassie came out with a few songs. You know, she did modeling, she did movies, but nothing came of her music career. How do you only put out one album and you have a 10 album deal? And then what he decided to do was make you his concub concubine. He, he, you know, you was his property. That's what that contract really was. So when you think about the other bad boy artists who always say, I was broke, I didn't make that much money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they have to find some way to make their money, so hey, I'm going to sue you to get the money that I'm owed. Now, do I think that Cassie would have had a whole bunch of platinum albums and stuff like that? I don't know if she would have had longevity in her music career. But her first album did go platinum. And Me and You, you know, that that's a big song. They still, well, especially now that everything has went down, they always play Me and You. That's one of the classics right there. Uh, Carl Thomas, Turtleneck, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody coming in the room? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So you get into these situations where you think that you're going to be this big artist. You think that this man is actually going to help you with your career, and nothing comes from it. And then you got to deal with, well, hell, if I say anything... This man is going to go around threatening me or threatening my pe people around me. I can't say nothing. Because we always see that argument. Why didn't, why, why didn't Cassie or other people come forward a long time ago? Well, we see what happens when they do come forward. People either call them a liar, people don't believe them, or their family gets threatened. And granted, back to um, Brianna, she basically eventually had to come forward because, yes, Diddy, she was the one who was dangled over the balcony. And Cassie was the one to tell that story. Cassie was the one to tell that story. So eventually the girl came forward, which is now, and sued. I think rightfully so. But here's my thing, too. Because we know... Victim one is Cassie, right? In the in the indictment, victim one is Cassie. 
Then there's a victim two. And all we know is there's about 50 victims and witnesses. About 50 victims, 50 witnesses. We still don't know who the co-conspirators are yet. But 50, 50 victims, 50 witnesses. So my question is, is Brianna and Tiffany Red those victims? Or are they witnesses? Are they victims or are they witnesses? Because Tiffany Red has also threatened to file a lawsuit as well. She said that she was suing Diddy. Now, I have to go back to one of my videos that I did on Tiffany Red, but she did a live where she says, I'm suing Diddy. I, I ha I've had enough and I'm suing him. And she has spoke up, spoken about how she felt scared for her life. There was one time that she smoked some weed and the weed made her lose track of thought and lose what uh, and lose memory of what happened that day. She talked about that. Now she hasn't went to full detail of her story, but also she mentioned that she wasn't paid for the music that she did for Cassie. Cause again, Cassie was supposed to have a 10 album deal and no music came out. Except the first album, but that was done by Ryan Leslie. The whole first album was done by Ryan Leslie. And you know who Ryan Leslie is? That's the man that Diddy sold his girlfriend, who was Cassie. Ryan Leslie and Cassie were in a relationship. He pursued Cassie even though she was in a relationship. That was the boyfriend, by the way, if you guys didn't know. I know it didn't list Ryan Leslie in the lawsuit, but Ryan Leslie was the boyfriend that Diddy was uh, that Diddy was trying to uh, well was the one where he was trying to pull Cassie away from the boyfriend. That was Ryan Leslie. If you guys didn't know, so yeah, it's a lot. So what I'm thinking is that the basis of this, it's all going to be around Cassie. And then the people that she named or mentioned in there. That's probably what's going to happen. I could definitely see that coming. It's going to be everybody that Cassie mentioned in her lawsuit. And then it's going to sprout from there. And then that's how they're going to build a case. I believe the main case is going to be Cassie because she was the girlfriend for however many years. Um, since 09, right? 09 to 2017, 18. Yeah. It's going to be basically around her because she was there for a majority of the time and then other people sprouting all over. I can see the indictment being built around. I, well, not I think. We know it's built around Cassie because she's listed. The, the stories are listed all throughout there, so we know that. Um, and I hope um, Brianna, I hope she gets her money. I can't imagine being dangled from... Uh, well, I'm fat, so I can't be dangled, but dangled from, you know, the balcony 17 stories high. Um, I'm going to play Tiffany Red's video because I didn't get a screenshot of the picture, but Tiffany shows you how high that balcony was. I'm going to go ahead and play it again. I'm really proud of my sis. I'm proud. You know, when you get into the music industry or entertainment or, you know, any of this kind of stuff, fashion, like you don't get into the game thinking that this is what your experience is going to be like. Like all of us um, that were creating around that time, we're all just one. We were all we all are so fucking talented. We had massive dreams and we're creating some incredible shit. And it is just so unfortunate that these are the things that were going on that um, hindered so much of the beautiful, incredible fire shit that we were creating for the world and that we created, you know, within our crew, you know. So it's crazy to see how it all is shaken out. But yeah. So the person that was hung off of Cassie's balcony um, in 2016 after the hotel incident um, is a woman. It's a woman. 
Here's the picture right there, you guys. There's the picture. So I wanted to show you guys that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine that. Mm. All right. So I wanted to go ahead and move on to the little bit of the conversation that I heard with, well, not the little bit. I heard the whole thing, the podcast that Jag 